There seems to be a million different ways of, of feeder rigs and different types of things that people use to catch bream. You've caught your fair share and more than most. Take me through your setup. Well, mine's always been a really simple setup, whether it be on lakes or on rivers. I just have a running feeder on a swivel clip, just running up and down the line. Most fisheries now, you know, you need to have a running feeder setup. Yep. They don't like fixed feeders. For fish safety, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I just twizzle a bit of line up there like that yeah. and I have one of them grippers that I just pull down over the knot and the feeder just runs straight up to that and then I just have an up length, simple up length. Most of the time in a commercial like this I'd be fishing with a foot, a foot up length. Right. And then it's just a hair rig hook on my hand, just whether I'm going to fish with pellets, boilies, uh, meat or corn. A lot of people used to tie sort of like four or five little knots in a line to make it stand out. Sure. If you just do it, if you twizzle the line up, look, it just stands out, you know, there's about four inch twizzled line there that you can see. So that, and that's just going to kick your hook length away right. from the feeder. Don't get any so it doesn't tangle. It's a fantastic right. way. Unfortunately, it's not, uh, I can't claim fame to that. It was Alan Scott on that sort of slaughtered that off years and years ago. But it's just such a simple way. The less knots you've got in feeder ridge as well, the better you are, you know, because you yeah. can encounter anything nowadays. Sure. Whether it be green barbel. I noticed yeah. you said on on commercial venues you'd start on a shorter hook length. Yeah, normally, you know, there's usually um, a limit to the foot now on most commercials you've got. Right, you know, Mi a, a minimum of a foot. Yeah, a minimum yeah. on a foot on, sure. a, on a running, you know. Mm -hmm. Feeder rig, obviously different if you're fishing on a method, you need a small hook length. But traditional bream methods, it used to be something like two and a half, three, four feet, didn't it? Right, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, everybody sort of learnt that if you've got a short hook length and you're going to get a bite, it pulls your rod in. I'm going to feed for decent fish, which is going to be skimmers and bream. So I'm going to feed micro pellets, a bit of corn and a few casters, but not too many casters. I don't want to attract too many small fish, but bream do like to come and graze over a few casters as sure. well. Sure. There's always been a stigma, isn't there, of yeah, you either I... fish worm and caster or sort yeah, of pellets. Yeah, I shall start off like this and if, if it's not successful I'll try introducing a few worms as well and fish a big worm on the up but I don't think I'm going to have to go down that route today. Right. I shan't put loads of stuff in there because I, I want to vary it as the day goes on so I'll just be sort of putting a few pellets in, a few grains of corn and just a few casters and then also I shall be doing with that. Fill it like this. So you just scoop it through yeah, the ground? Yeah, scoop bit. it through the ground and just a small squeeze like that. If you squeeze that in really lightly, the water's going to attack that, I presume. When, when that's cast in, it's going to go down, hit the bottom and just explode out of the feeder. It's only a shallowish lake here, it's about seven foot, so I want to get it to the bottom. It's the bottom, just give it a bit of a tug and that, obviously my bait will come down because it falls virtually outside of your feeder. Right. Just a bit of a tug, the bait will come out and that'll just release all the particles and the aroma. Today we're going to be using Baytex soft hookers in conjunction with white or red boilers and we should just be attracting the better fish like skimmers, bream and hopefully an odd tench. Two of them on, a, on an air rig would be absolutely perfect for today. The texture of them is absolutely perfect. Quite easily fish them on a feeder all day and you will not be casting them off, that's the beauty of them. They've not been pumped so they won't be splitting. I think the good thing is as well they're pretty semi-buoyant to be honest. They'll flutter down through the layers exactly, and settle yeah. on, top of the, right. on top of your bait. Yeah, we'll put a couple of these on and two side by side. Sure. They're absolutely per perfect for air rigging, these are. Now you've got the loop of your hair there, yeah. that goes over your baiting needle. That goes over the baiting needle. And we just, because over the loop like that, pull them down like that, onto the hook. Onto the hair. Yeah, and then just put a stop in. And I love these pellet stops, if I don't drop it. And that just sits in there like that. As simple as that? Simple as that, and that's basically our hook bait for today, two six mil pellets. It'll just be lying on your bait like that on the bottom and they'll be nosing about in that and they'll just find it, suck it in and that's it. What self-respecting bream could resist that? None of them could resist it, fantastic. Got a line clip there. Are you I've got a line clip distance? on. Yeah, it's set up at uh, 38 turns on here. A lot of people now t talk in turns of reel, don't they? Yeah. As opposed to yards, because it's this reel, easier. 38 to... turns is about 35 yards. Right. It's a lot easier to talk in terms of a, t a turn on the reel yeah. rather than yards, because obviously you're more accurate. You can physically count yeah. how many turns. And as it's a bottom, I like to just give it a bit of a tweak and just straighten everything out. And it just gives me a couple of winds then, just in case I get a big fish, I've got time to get the clip off. Sure, so basically as the feeder lands, 
and the hook bait falls vertically behind it. That's right. It comes down, you then just pull it slightly, yeah, that's right. just which releases the bait, releases the bait drags yeah. the feeder in, straightens your hook length. Yeah, absolute so deadly method for skimmers. Effect, yeah, effectively, the fish come in, pick it up, that's right. and they're on. doing the game they're just so enthusiastic but still there's a lot to be learnt again really there's modern trends coming out all the time now and baits go in totally different ways to what it used to do when you used to think we we started out with brown crumb and now look where we are with ground bait unbelievable it's been really interesting developing the ground bait and it's something i've always wanted to do we've got a lot of good quality anglers developing the bait and i think they'll take it on to another level it's a very innovative company it's absolutely fantastic days fishing today. Proof is in the pudding that the ground bait and the pellets really work.